A landslide victory for Narendra Modi's BJP seemed to herald a new era in Indian politics. But how inclusive, how tolerant is the new Modi-led India? So you can say, yes, I'm a Hindu nationalist, because I'm a born Hindu. I'm a, I'm a patriotic, so nothing is wrong in it. India's Prime Minister hails from the RSS, a hardline Hindu nationalist organization and the ideological backbone of his ruling BJP party. Critics blame the organization for the murder of India's iconic independence leader and accuse it of neo-fascism and inciting violence against minorities. RSS activists have been widely linked with those Hindu mobs who slaughtered perhaps as many as 2,000 Muslims. Everybody attacked us, even the police. They poured kerosene and acid on us and set us on fire. So, is communal violence on the rise in Modi's India? And is the world's largest democracy now flirting with fascism? My guest tonight firmly believes that India is a Hindu nation, but insists that his party's Hindu nationalist ideology can be a unifying force. I'm Mehdi Hassan, and I've come here to the Oxford Union to go head-to-head -head with Ram Madhav, National General Secretary of the BJP and former spokesman for the controversial RSS. I'll challenge him on whether his brand of Hindu nationalism is compatible with secular democracy, and I'll ask whether India's minorities are under attack. Tonight, I'll also be joined by Dr. Natasha Call, a Kashmiri novelist, academic, economist and poet who's also Assistant Professor of Politics and International Relations at London's University of Westminster. Dr. Gautam Sen, former lecturer at the London School of Economics and president of the World Association of Hindu Academicians. And Mehboob Khan, a UK-based journalist of Indian origin who's currently a presenter at UN Radio. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Ram Madhav. He's the RSS spin doctor turned BJP leader who's been dubbed Prime Minister Modi's ambassador at large. Thank you so much for coming. Ram Madhav, can you explain to me why it is that since your party leader, uh, Narendra Modi, became Prime Minister in May of 2014, uh, more than 40 leading Indian writers and novelists have returned their awards in protest of what they call a climate of intolerance. Over 100 distinguished scientists have issued a statement denouncing attacks on minorities, and over 100 religious minority groups have launched a nationwide movement to counter what they see as the BJP's onslaught on religious freedom. Many more scientists Many more uh, intellectuals have denounced these efforts in the name of uh, award returning, etc., to defame the government and in, in turn to defame the image of India. You must remember that India is a big country. People can have their views. If you have 36 intellectuals returning their awards, 36,000 intellectuals said, no, your step is wrong. Your decision, your uh, tactics is wrong. You can have your opinion. So your but response is to say is, that they're just defaming India. These are leading figures, some of the most influential, award-winning authors. They're, they're all just defaming India. Their concerns, their views are appreciated. Doesn't but sound by, like you're appreciating by, by, uh, them. You they, just accuse them of defaming India. In India. India is a country of 1 point, I mean 125 crore, 1.2 billion people. People can have their opinions. The, the method they adopted, returning the awards given by the people of India, that method was wrong. In terms of the stats, data from your own Ministry of Home Affairs showed a near 25% increase in incidents of communal violence in the first five months of 2015. The news magazine India Today says, looking at Home Ministry data, it reported there has been, quote, a surge of communally charged incidents in BJP-led states like Maharashtra, Madhya Pradesh, and Jharkhand. Violence and attacks are on the up in India. That's your own government's uh, data. Totally wrong data you have, first of all. We I are, have, we are your in, government. You have, I'm giving you. You I, should I, chat to your no, Home no, Ministry. I tell you, okay. first of all, where you are wrong, I'm telling you. Okay, Our government do. is in power for 18 months, not okay. six months, my friend. I give you 18 months data. Okay. 18 months, in 2014, the number of communal incidents has come down in India. Okay. 2014, 2015 data was released by the government just two days ago, few days ago in the Indian parliament. Check that data. Okay, well, the National Crime Records Bureau has actually disputed that data, but let's, let's look at a specific issue then. Let's look at the recent controversy over beef. 
big controversy the world's been watching. Uh, beef is, of course, something many religious Hindus don't eat, uh, don't want others to eat because the cow is a sacred animal uh, for them. There have been three incidents of Indian Muslims being murdered, lynched uh, by far-right Hindu mobs for allegedly possessing beef or being involved in the, quote, beef market. Um, after the first incident on 28th September, uh, your prime minister kept silent for two weeks before finally saying that what had happened was sad and unwelcome. BJP MP Tarun Vijay said lynching a person merely on suspicion is absolutely wrong, because apparently if you have evidence, then you can lynch them. Uh, Sangeet Som, <laughs> BJP lawmaker, he dismissed... <laughs> BJP lawmaker Sangeet Som dismissed the victims, the dead, as, quote, cow killers, while another BJP leader threatened to behead people who eat beef. Is it any wonder that the British Indian sculptor Anish Kapoor, one man I know, said India is being ruled by a Hindu version of the Taliban? Yes, as you rightly said, one man can say but anything. based on these statements, these incidents, it's a pretty good these, description. These incidents were condemned in strongest terms. They were reprimanded by the them. party. We, they were reprimanded by the party. But I must Your tell you something. I must tell you something very important. Please. You must understand. Beef ban is not a BJP invention in India. You must remember. Beef ban has been there in India for the last 60 years. Not nationwide. Not in 22 states. Yeah. India is how many states, you please tell me? 29, I believe. 29. So Out of the 22 states, ban, then, 23 it? states has beef ban. Okay. Number one. Number two, you must remember it's not a Hindu-Muslim issue at all. Agreed. You are saying Hindus you. don't eat. Hindus I know, I yeah. know. Many Muslims, I handle Kashmir affairs. Many Muslims in Kashmir don't eat beef. Yeah. So don't make it into a Hindu-Muslim issue. And many what happened? So we agree on that. I, we agree. But the point is, okay. we condemned the heinous crimes committed but by have people. You has the Prime Minister, we did. We sad did. and unwelcome is not really a condemnation, is it? What, uh, the Prime Minister said it was sad and unwelcome. That's did, not true. He said, what did he say? I condemn those me. incidents. I condemn that incident. He has, ex he has asked the concerned state government, Uttar Pradesh government, to act against the culprits, the chief which the government okay. is doing. The chief, you said only a few people. Let me give you a fourth. The chief minister of Haryana state described the lynching as a, quote, misunderstanding. I, Im immediately, immediately disowned by the party. Okay. He immediately apologized. Why you don't have, you say the you other have, part? You have to do a lot of disowning. I'm just wondering why they say this stuff in the first the, place. The, have you reprimanded them? Absolutely. What's the punishment? Punishment? We, we, took, the, we took the necessary action, what was the action against them. I will tell you when it's necessary, not necessary now. <laughs> it was a, it's a secret. We were so tough on them, we can't tell you what we did. Um, <laughs> the problem is it's not just beef, is it? There's an issue with the rhetoric coming out across the board uh, from some ministers. Uh, BJP Minister Giriraj Singh said India's growing Muslim population is a big threat. We have to protect Hindu religion. Uh, senior BJP official Subramaniam Swami says a mosque is not a religious place. It's just a building. It can be demolished at any time. BJP Culture Minister Mahesh Sharma called a former Muslim president of India, quote, a great nationalist despite being a Muslim. Despite being a Muslim. Do you condemn those views as well? We did ask all of them to... It's not expected of them to say those things. Why are they saying but that, how can I answer why are they saying? Your colleagues. They're saying that, no, look at India's politician statements. Look at what a politician called Ajam Khan says. Look at what OIC says. Look at what some other so politician from Malayan says. We're back says. in the playground. Look in what a, they said. Look, I'll ask them when they come on the show. No, so, I'm asking so, you so now. So across the spectrum, across We're all the bigots across, across the spectrum. spectrum. Is that the argument? We all should condemn. We all okay. should condemn if an irresponsible statement but is made. But so many. So many ministers. Not, so many not, MPs. Not We've so been many. through just a handful. No, no. Okay. <laughs> saying Does the Prime Minister get tired in his busy schedule having to reprimand ministers and colleagues all the time? No, no, no. Don't worry. Don't worry. The Prime Minister has been criticised for not criticising strongly enough, for being silent, taking his time to condemn the beef issue, etc. Some would say we shouldn't be surprised, uh, given he's the same BJP politician who was Chief Minister of Gujarat after the massacres, the pogroms there of 2,000 Muslims in 2002. Correct he... your numbers again. How many? You can't give numbers as you like. Okay, how many people died? The UPA government, the Congress government, in the parliament gave out the figures. It is 790 Muslims, 260 Hindus. Okay. You cannot quote numbers as you like. Fine. 700, I, I apologize. Human Rights Watch, India's National Human Rights Commission. The US State Department denied a visa to him until very recently, as did the UK government, because they all believed that he was either directly or indirectly responsible for those deaths. No, uh, remember, even our Human Rights Commission, etc., accused the government of some kind of uh, slow reaction, slow response and all. Nobody held him responsible. Even quotes, 
did not hold him responsible. But you must remember one thing. For those uh, incidents that have happened in the state, one minister is in jail with 28-year punishment. Maya one minister, Maya Kodnani. Close the, ally the, of Indian, Modi Indian was judici- handing Indian out judici- swords to people. So you, you remember Indian judiciary is vibrant. It will punish the guilty. But you, you know, can't expect everybody to be punished because you, know, you don't like him. Do you know in any other judiciary elected... Judiciary will do its job. Do you know in most elected governments... Do they allow judiciary to do its job? In, in most democracies, in most democracies, a close ally of the prime minister or minister who was filmed handing out swords to people to murder murder people, that would reflect pretty badly on the leader of that so government. Definitely she's punished for the... And how does that reflect what, on Narendra what, Modi? What? After, Mo- after the massacres, he was asked about whether he's sad about the deaths. He said, if someone else is driving a car and we're sitting behind, if a puppy comes under the wheel, will it not be painful or not? It's natural to be sad. Did he compare thousands of dead no, people, Muslim and Hindu, to a, to a puppy? He did not compare. People who do not have any intellectual thinking yeah. will say those things. Okay. I'm asking, you tell me what it means. You tell me what it means. I'm not an intellectual. It means a simple thing, simple thing to understand. We are so sensitive, even a small creature is harmed. We feel sad. If a human is harmed, don't you feel sad? Fine. Let's go to our panel who have been waiting very patiently uh, to come in. Dr. Natasha Call is a novelist, professor of politics at the University of Westminster in the UK. Uh, Natasha, um, this is silly says Ram. A lot of this is just political, point scoring. People haven't got better things to do. The BJKB government's doing well, so we focus on these kind of outrageous statements that have been reprimanded. What's your response to that? Let's, uh, first of all, let me say that my numbers are correct, and I'm willing to back every one of these numbers. So in the first, there was a report released earlier this year which said that in the first 300, years, 300 days of this government, 600 cases of recorded violence in which four, at least 43 deaths, 149 incidents where Christians were targeted, the rest were where Muslims were targeted. So this is not someone's invention. Every single time this happens, people are, are you know, they say that this is just fringe elements. This is very much part and parcel of a government that has come to power, which is Hindu supremacy. And in, and in addition, socially regressive and economically neoliberal. And that's the toxic combination we're faced with. And it's not just the award wapsi, it's the reconversions under the ghar wapsi that they've had. It's the uh, accusations of love jihad when there are marriages between Hindus and Muslims. It's the murder of atheists, secularists, and rationalists that we have seen in India. Mm-hmm. We have seen uh, the killings of the beef man. Um, and th- there have been spokespeople from their government <laughs> that... Let me, let me bring in, you made a lot of points, so let me bring in Dr. Gautam Sen, who's a former lecturer at the London School of Economics, president of the World Association of Hindu Academicians. Uh, do you want to respond to Natisha's charge sheet there? Well, I think a lot of the facts she's quoting, and I'm afraid you as well, are uh, disputed. That these are not correct, and I have actually read the report on communal violence, but I won't bear, uh, labor the point now, because we will not agree. I'm I, willing to back each of these points I, with I, no, I can tell you. It is easy to focus on a laundry list of accusations and make it out as if the entire country represents them. I am appalled, like many people, that there are unreasonable people who say unreasonable things. I know for a fact the Prime Minister finds it appalling because it is not convenient for a sitting Prime Minister to have this kind of grief. Every politician in India knows, no matter what they say, that we cannot afford civil violence. It will destroy our country. We do not like what is happening in Syria, Libya, Iraq, that the West has inflicted. We do not want this in our society. As for unreasonable people, yes, and I think the Prime Minister does apologize. I will only say the Supreme Court exonerated him completely after the most searching investigation. Even I thought up to two years that he never, was responsible. Supreme Court exonerate someone they never tried? I'm not sure that's true. I'm not sure the Supreme Court can exonerate someone who's never actually been on trial in front of them. But let's just uh, bring up Mahbub Khan as a UK-based journalist of Indian origin, lived and worked in India. What's your take on what you've heard so far this night? We have seen, even after one week, when uh, Prime Minister Modi took over as a Prime Minister on uh, 28th May last year, on 4th of June, one boy was killed in Pune. There is a mob, they took out him and they leased him to death. There was no word from Prime Minister Modi. One more thing that when they are out of the power, they ignite the communal violence. When they are in the power, they have given it the new face, actually. Now they are openly saying that if you disagree with us, go to Pakistan. Such statements, whoever makes those statements, I'm the general secretary of the party, prime minister, our party have unequivocally condemned those statements. Nobody needs to leave India. 
Uh, you're currently National General Secretary of the BJP, uh, but you're actually only there on loan, I believe, because <laughs> you're still a pracharak. You're a full-time activist for the Rashtriya Swayam Savik Sangh, the RSS, uh, the multi-million member right-wing uh, Hindu nationalist organization. It's often described as the ideological backbone of the BJP. Narendra Modi is a lifelong member of it. Uh, you've said that the RSS and the BJP share the same ideology, the same vision. Critics say that the ideology is Hindu supremacist, it's anti-minority, it's fascist even. How would you, a former RSS spokesman, describe the ideology no, of the completely, RSS? Completely wrong. The RSS <laughs> ideology is for the unity of India. It is neither supremacist, nor aggressive, nor dominant. It is for the whole country, for all the people. RSS ideology stands for One India, United India. So when people talk about the RSS ideology, do you understand why um, some people are afraid? They look at the past, they look at the history. Uh, MS Golwalkar, for example, former leader of the RSS, one of its most influential voices, someone both you and the Prime Minister have described as inspirational. He was inspired, he says, by Nazi Germany, which displayed, he said, a race pride at its highest and was a good lesson for use in Hindustan, in India. He said the three main threats to India, internal threats, were number one Muslims, number two Christians, number three communists. He referred to India's Muslim menace and to India's Christians as bloodsuckers. Do you understand why people are nervous when they hear the RSS, when they see people like Golwalkar are behind it? And now that you're quoting Golwalkar, let me quote Golwalkar for you. <laughs> for your benefit, you Please should. Do. <laughs> because many times you misquote him. Okay. Did I misquote uh, him just now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did absolutely, I? absolutely. He, he absolutely. never said. Well, for the simple okay. reason. For the simple reason. Okay. Blood suckers, etc., was not used by him. Those words were never used by Guruji Golwalkar. I challenge you, okay. and I am telling you what please, he please said. Read. I am telling you what he said. <laughs> According to our ways of religious belief and philosophy, a Muslim is as good as a Hindu. It is not the Hindu alone who will reach the ultimate Godhead. Everyone has the right to follow his path according to his own persuasion. That is our attitude. This is Guruji Golwalkar. Fantastic. So he didn't say, so just to clarify, so just to clarify, he didn't say what have the Christians done in practice. Wherever they have gone, they have proved not to be blood givers but blood suckers. No, he didn't say that. He didn't say that. He doesn't say you in must, a bunch of thoughts, you, you must, third you, edition, 1966, no. available on the RSS website no, to download No, no, he and didn't read. use the word blood suckers at all. You are misquoting okay. it. He didn't use the blood suckers at all. Did he, he didn't say the three main internal threats are Muslims, yes, Christians, yes, communists. There, there, there are challenges. We have the three challenges in our country. Three challenges. One is Christianity. Okay. Oh, yeah, this no is enemies. a show of challenges. I'm you a this is a show of challenges. We have to talk about challenges. So you're translating had, enemy we, as challenge? Yeah. Okay. No, no. He no didn't enemy. say the three main internal threats. No, no. Internal threats, internal challenges? Yes. Well, let's, yes. in the wake of the Gujarat massacre, let's see, let's see if I've got a mistranslation here. The RSS passed a resolution in Bangalore in 2002 when you were part of the executive committee. Let Muslims understand that their real safety lies in the goodwill of the majority. How is that not a threat? What we said was, what happened in Gujarat is highly condemnable yes. in any society. Muslims and Hindus, if they are friendly with each other, that is the biggest guarantee of any security okay. of the society. How is it a threat? If I say me and Mehdi should be friends, am I threatening you? If David Cameron were to say, let British Hindus understand that their real safety lies in the goodwill of the majority. Do you think people would think that was acceptable? They wouldn't. Uh, just while we're on the subject, you yourself said this is Hindustan, this is a Hindu country earlier this year. What did you mean by that? Clarify yes. that. Hindustan is a word that is in vogue for this country much before RSS was born. <clears throat> when we say Hindustan, it's a land where a particular way of life, a particular culture or a civilization is practiced, which is broadly identified only one culture? Country will have one culture which accommodates different streams. And it's a Hindu culture. Different streams. You call it Hindu, you call it no, Sikhic, you, you call it, it anything. I'm asking we, what you call no, it. No, no, we call it Hindu. Do you have any objection? If you want to call it otherwise, call it. But India has one culture. We are one culture, one people, but one they, nation. But the Muslims, the Christians, the Sikhs, the millions of people who are not Hindu might say, I'm Indian, but I'm not Hindu. So where does that, where do I fit in because here? Because, see, Hindu term, is yeah. used differently by in different... So you mean cultural? Are you saying what you've Absolutely. defined as Hindu? It's not Hindu used culture. in the religious connotation So here's my all. question. Where does a definition of Indianness that is on Hindu culture, where does that leave uh, Muslim contributions? For example, the Taj Mahal. What would you do with that? Would you flatten it? Would you paint it orange? How do you make it Hindu? Very much part of it. Very much part of it. How do you make it Hindu? 
you tell me the, the greatest contributions of India. Do we want to make them Muslim now? But is it Hindu culture? That's all I'm asking. Is Taj Mahal part of Hindu culture? Yeah, very is much it? in terms of our civilizational and cultural ethos, they are all part of it. But so Taj Mahal if, is if, part of Hindu Muslim, culture. if a Muslim doesn't want to admit it, so be it. Let him call it a Muslim culture. It is different I'm from Hindu culture. I'm asking you, Ram. It's a very simple question. Is Taj Mahal part of Hindu part culture? Part of our culture. Is it Hindu? Part of our culture, which we call you Hindu. You define. Oh, yeah, we call Hindu. It's so a whatever part you of our like, culture. you call Hindu. Yeah, yeah. Let's go to our let's go to our back to our panel. Uh, Mahbub Ram says uh, this is about culture. This is not about religion. This is about culture. What's wrong with defining India as a Hindu culturally Hindu nation? I would ask uh, Madhav that when you say that Muslims, if Muslims earn the goodwill of majority, they can live with peace. Why it is Muslim they have to earn the goodwill? Why Hindus should not earn the goodwill of the Muslims? Uh, uh, your concerns are very genuine. It's not about. Muslims winning the goodwill of Hindus alone, it is the other way also. If you are in small number, if you feel threatened, have the goodwill of the majority in your area. You live, uh, you have a goodwill and good relations. How That's what we mean. How that should they do in it Kashmir, then? we tell our friends that earn goodwill of uh, the existing majority there, which happens to be Muslim. Why does a so citizen, we will have, why does a citizen of a country this? have to earn anything? Why don't no. they have rights as citizens, no, as no. equal members of society? See, that is your understanding. We say you cannot hand over everything to government. I'm a citizen. Protecting me is your responsibility. That's not the way we look at it. We look at it as you all have goodwill so that you all protect each other. Nutrition. To different audiences, the RSS and the BJP, they work hand in glove with each other. Um, the RSS actually uh, has, has camps where young boys and girls are trained in the use of weapons. There is evidence of this, uh, well documented, where they are taught and they've made statements such as we will build, bo we will build bombs, we will kill Muslims. And um, there, are, there is video footage recorded that they have uh, of Yogi Adityanath, uh, you know, one of their uh, MPs, the BJP MPs, on stage with people whose his supporters are asking the crowd to exhume the dead bodies of uh, Muslim women and to rape them. And that was followed by an incident like that actually happening. So this is not somebody making things up. That, that person is still an MP. The BJP, RSS, the Sangh Parivar ideology is not one of civic nationalism. It's not one of uh, looking at people in terms of their rights. It is very much along a socially regressive, uh, community-based uh, notion of rights. And just one, one, one point, one point. Hold on, let me respond to your point now. In RSS system, no weapon training is allowed. Time is running out. Just deal with the point about the guy who pulled out, said pull out dead bodies. No, no, if we, if we have made such statement, it is reprehensible. We strongly condemn it. I have to say one thing. I used to also shrink back at the very name of the RSS. I'm afraid now I know a lot of the leaders. And the only accusation I'd make against the RSS is that you are pussycats and you're amateurs. There is absolutely no trace Where? of violence. I know all the People top leaders, apart from mother and others, there is no threat of violence. They are a little bit anxious about celebrating the historic past of Hinduism. A country occupied for 1,200 years has every right to do that. It may be exaggerated. Occupied for respond uh, briefly. Uh, RSS, excuse me, the RSS knows in anybody with any, anybody with the any good sense. Uh, of course they were occupiers. Oh, what do you mean? Mughals were occupiers. So, Who else? So the entire history yes, of Mughals India is only Mughals, Hindu. Me. No, do you mean to say Mughals were Indian? Okay, okay. We're going to have to take a break there. Uh, in part two, we're going to be back with Ram Madhav talking about the intractable conflict in Kashmir. And we're going to hear from our very patient audience here in the Oxford Union. That's after the break. Welcome back. You're watching Head to Head on Al Jazeera. My guest is Ram Madhav, General Secretary of the BJP. Uh, we've been talking about the BJP, about the RSS, about uh, Hindutva and ideology. In this part, I want to talk about uh, a political conflict that's been going on for a very long time, the, the, uh, the issue of Kashmir, uh, the territory disputed both by India and Pakistan since partition. Uh, it's led to several wars. Uh, tens of thousands of people have died. Experts are worried about a nuclear exchange starting because of the standoff in Kashmir. And yet, in November, Prime Minister Modi visited the area. He said, I don't need advice or analysis from anyone in the world on Kashmir, despite the fact that he doesn't seem to have any solution to the conflict there, apart from throwing more money at the problem. And yet the challenge of Kashmir, wouldn't you agree, is not developmental, it's not socioeconomic, it's political, it's geopolitical. Uh, the only outstanding issue for us with regard to the Kashmir problem is 
the Kashmir under Pakistan occupation. The Kashmir that is, <laughs> that is an integral part of India. It has been proved time and again that it's an integral part of India. So when the Prime Minister is visiting Kashmir, he is visiting He's any other state. Indian state, it's not like any, any other, other Indian it's a state, state. with tens of thousands of people being killed in an insurgency against the government uh, from people who live in that state who aren't very uh, happy with the situation. I, 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 I think we would agree. I handle Jammu Kashmir affairs. More people have died, have died in the state because of the terrorism that was perpetrated by people from across the borders than so the real so, so called political happy, violence. It's all, it's all a Pakistani no, conspiracy. No, no, there are political demands in Kashmir. They will and be taken care of, short of separatism, short of separating from India. The Kashmiris can ask for anything under Indian constitution. It will be considered favorably and granted by the Indian state. And they are part of India. And yet there is this conflict with Pakistan over Kashmir. India has rejected uh, the latest four-point plan from the Pakistani PM, which he presented at the United Nations in September, which included demilitarizing the region. Uh, you yourself have rejected what you call docile diplomacy, I believe. Uh, your government, many would say, has no interest in bilaterally and peacefully resolving this issue once and for with Pakistan. You're happy with the status quo? As far as Kashmir is concerned, I said, where we stand, we stand only outstanding issue is POK. As neighbors have to have good relations, we strive for that. It's not a question for BJP so government what's your alone. Solution? Successive governments have what's tried. What's your government's solution? Yes, we are trying for the same I'm asking thing. For the solution. We are trying for the same what thing. What is the solution? Our NSCA level talks are happening. Our foreign secretary level talks are happening. What do you want to happen? see happen? What's Our your Prime Minister has talked to the Prime Minister of Pakistan at and Paris Summit. What is summit. your proposal? What is your solution? I'm yes, asking. We, we talk it out. Just keep we talking. Talk it out. But yes, what's the end result? Solution. <laughs> there, it's a very vexed problem, my friend. And I'm asking well, for your solution. What's wait, your... wait. Have patience. We two countries have patience. Only 60, 70. We years want later. peace. Yeah, why, why are you worried? We are settling it out. We're worried. We are we don't, the rest of the world doesn't want a nuclear war because your two no, no, countries no, can't worry. sort it out. Yeah, you worry about many more things that are happening. Your ISIS can catch hold of uh, My nuclear ISIS. weapons. <laughs> <laughs> worry about My them. ISIS. Worry, worry about them. Worry you about my ISIS. Them. Your ISIS in the sense, ISIS can catch hold of uh, 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 nuclear weapons. Worry about them. The terrorists in the Middle East, terrorists in Pakistan can catch hold of okay. nuclear weapons. Worry about them. As far as India and Pakistan are concerned, we behave as responsible nations. We try and uh, sort out the issues through Responsible nations that have fought discussions. several wars that have nuclear weapons in defiance of the international community. And you can't even tell me tonight what your proposal for peace is apart from talking about ISIS. We have to talk so, yeah, about how, how, how much can we... Okay, let's talk about... No, 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 no. Okay, let's talk about... No, 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 no,
people's human rights. And, and most human rights disagreements, if not every, disagrees with you when it comes to Kashmir. They, they have a right to disagree. Of course they have a right. <laughs> they have a right. human right to disagree. Substance. We can joke about that, but the right is the right. Let's go to the panel who are listening here uh, patiently. Uh, and Dr. Natisha Kaul, what do you think are the prospects of peace under a BJP-led government, Ram rightly points out that several Indian governments, not just BJP governments, have failed to solve this co conflict, failed to resolve it. What do you think this government's going to do? Well, you see, on the issue of Kashmir, actually, the uh, Hindu nationalists are, uh, are just a more extreme version of the Indian nationalists, because throughout the 90s, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't the BJP in power. Uh, however, what they share is a more extreme version of the same argument that Dood mangoge to khir denge, Kashmir mangoge to cheer denge. If you ask for milk, we'll give you pudding. If you ask for Kashmir, we'll tear you to bits. It's one of the most military places in the world. The Armed Forces Special Powers Act, which is an emergency powers act, has now been in force for 25 years plus. So there have been, like, you know, these tens of thousands of killings, women who are half widows, mass graves, mass rapes, you know, it's, it's a complete travesty of justice there. And the thing is that those people are being claimed in the name of a democracy, but really the concern is with territory, not the people there. And there isn't any genuine effort, most of the time, by this government included, in the past they've said, insaniyat ke daire mein, you know, in the ambit of humanity will talk, okay. but they don't. The Kashmiris let are not involved. In, let me bring in uh, Gautam, waiting patiently. Gautam said, isn't it fair to say that the BJP's non-docile diplomacy is doomed to fail like the quote-unquote docile diplomacy apparently that went before? I'm afraid their problem is insoluble because the only issue Pakistan wants to negotiate sovereignty, and that's not going to be on the table. And I didn't know that Dr. Call was the representative of the Pakistan embassy in Oxford I today. I am not, and this is defamation. <laughs> Excuse me. I strongly... Strongly object. This is defamatory, and this is exactly the kind of anti-national label that they give to anybody who dissents with them as a Kashmiri Hindu. To make your point, do you want to respond? Do you want to withdraw the remark? Do you want to withdraw the remark? I do not withdraw my complaint. I well, also want should. to. I also want to say. Is there going to be a peace deal under this government? Yes or no? I think peace is going to prove extremely elusive because the demand will not be met. Okay, thank you. Mahbub Khan, you spent four years as a correspondent in Indian administered Kashmir. You even, I believe, received uh, threats, you say, uh, from the Indian government over your news reports on human rights abuses. What is your view? I would say to Ram, if successive government have failed in finding a solution, so, and you are saying that you are ready to talk on anything. So why don't you talk to Huriyat, which is the main hurdle is, is there now. And if you take them, if you engage them, even since uh, Prime Minister Modi has come to power, uh, he has refused or he has lost several opportunities. So first, I think you have to get rid of this that Kashmiri, uh, the whole Kashmir is integral part. That is a problem you have to lead. If, if you are sincere, okay. then you have to some, find some in. common ground. Otherwise, you are going to fail. Ram, come back in briefly. I want to bring uh, in the audience. So yeah, come back in briefly. Uh, yeah, my simple point is Hurriyat can talk to the Jammu and Kashmir state government in our common minimum program. We have stated that as internal stakeholders, the Hurriyat can always talk to the state government. Okay. Hurriyat, we do not consider as a player in the international politics between India and Pakistan. They will be handled by respective governments. Okay. You are asking repeatedly what will happen. Okay. We will together work as two democracies, as long as democracy survives in Pakistan. We work as two democracies. We will not talk to a military okay. Pakistan. <laughs> let's go to our audience uh, here in the Oxford Union. Uh, let me go, let's, we'll go, gentlemen here at the front. I'm an Indian, uh, and I now live in UK. I have always been proud of being a product of the composite culture of India. To my British friends, I often say that India is an example of unity and diversity. I remind my local friends of Mahatma Gandhi's okay. nonviolent approach to problems. However, things are changing now. And I feel that organizations like RSS actually are spoiling the Hindu religion. I feel that these organizations are doing to Hinduism what Al-Qaeda and ISIS have done to Islam. Thank you. Let's put that point around. No, uh, I think, I think he, he, my, has a, my, he, he doesn't have a question. He has a view. 
He is entitled to his view. I will only say that your opinion is wrong, RSS and uh, RSS and ISIS, Al Qaeda, ISIS. The very comparison defeats your whole argument that our syncretic culture should be protected. I am for your argument that we should protect our pluralism. I am for your argument that India's multiple, multiple religious identities should be protected. Question. But you have defeated your argument okay. by comparing okay. RSS Sorry, with ISIS. Okay. Sorry, you, you, you are a biased okay. thinking. You, 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 you are in. You your point. No, no, but okay. okay. You you made your points now. Let's go. You made your point. Gentlemen in the second row, yes, you with your hand up there. In Haryana, BJP government is promoting uh, Bhagavad Gita, the Hindu scripture, by giving 1 million rupees to all its 21 states. Why the government doesn't do it for like other religious scriptures and how they are allowed to use public fundings for promoting a specific religion? Uh, Bhagavad Gita is considered a very important ancient treasure of India. We regard, we attach great uh, respect to it. It doesn't mean we disrespect any other religious scripture. Government uh, is free to support all religions. We support all religions. Our government supports all, all the religions. But in a secular nation, you treat all religions equally, don't you? Yeah, of course. Uh, that, is, that is precisely so what be, we stand so for. will we, you be funding no, the spreading no, but, of the but Quran the, and the my, my point is, you ask for special treatment to minorities. We are saying, let us have equal respect okay, to so all. Agreed. So we, we give agreed. equal respect so to will all. You be, so on equal ground, will you be funding the spreading no, of the... Let, let Maharashtra... Uh, let will you Haryana, be funding let, the spreading let, of the Quran let, and the Bible? Let, under government let Haryana's Muslim leadership approach the government. They will certainly do the needful. Are you in favor of that? Let, let the I'm, government I'm do asking, the needful. I'm asking you. Whatever is good, whatever is right, the government will do. Whatever is right. Are you in favor of what, the government? Whatever is right, the government will do. And I'm asking you, are you in favor of I'm the government I'm not the chief minister of the state. I'm a, but you have an opinion. We've seen tonight. You have I, a fair my, few my, opinions. My opinion, my opinion cannot be in your words. It will be in my words. My I'm opinion waiting. is, whatever is right, the government will do. <laughs> that's not an opinion. That that's, opinion. A, that's a classic politician. Can we go to someone? The, can we go to I'm someone? A politician. Can we go to the? Can, do you agree with? Do you agree with funding the Bhagavad Gita's? Absolutely. Okay, nothing so wrong you have an opinion. Nothing wrong okay, good. Good to know. Nothing wrong. Yes, lady at the back. Yes, you. Since RSS is always seen as a Hindu organization, could you please tell the audience, the, the Islamic, the Muslim, and the Christian organization that are working with the RSS to help everyone in the country so that the audience knows you? Oh, actually, we have, uh, I don't claim they are in tons and tons, but we have some, definitely some members from different communities who understand us and who work for us. Okay. Several organizations also work for I'm with gonna, us. I'm going to go to the gentleman at the front. I am a proud Indian, and I am a Christian. My question is, the Christian institutions have served for a long time, educational-wise, development-wise. But today, in many parts of India, Christians and Christian institutions are attacked, and they are sometimes destroyed, unfortunately. And according to the constitution of the government, the government is supposed to protect all people, uh, including minority Christians. Okay. Why is the government uh, not taking action against those who clearly promoting hate campaign and doing who, hate who, crimes against minorities? Who do you believe is promoting the hate campaign against Christians? Who? Just to be clear, who do you believe is promoting a hate campaign against Christians? I think. Uh, you see, the, the government is not taking any action against okay, the Hindu okay, Tua that. groups. Let, let, let me, Quickly. Let, let, let me yes. first of all tell you that uh, the government takes every necessary step to protect all religions, including Christians and Christian institutions. There were some attacks on some institutions just before the Delhi election. Six attacks happened. After Delhi election, no attacks. Look at the history. There is no attack. No, suddenly. So all those six attacks had nothing to do with religion. They were burglaries. Do you know in Delhi, 40 Gurudwaras uh, were attacked so all by, of, by, just, by burglars? Ram, so just, just to check, all the Christian groups who feel they're under attack, they're all imagining it. No, no, they're just no. being robbed. Most, most of them, most of them, they are victims of certain campaign. Okay. Everybody will be safe. We will ensure that everybody is protected and everybody's the religion is protected. Second. Gentlemen here in the third row, yes. Uh, sir, it's like uh, Congress government looted the country for 60 years and uh, they promoted the media. Now Congress and media blaming BJP and RSS. Why are you not taking any action on the Congress looters? There are so many people who looted the country. No, no looter will be spared. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go back to the audience, this lady here, and then we'll go to the back. You said earlier that the BJP has nothing to do with the legality of beef in India. So does the BJP support it? It seems discriminatory in a secular country. Uh, you see, uh, as I said uh, earlier, 
there is a legal ban on cow slaughter and production of beef, consumption of beef. Beef, when I say, mostly it is cow meat. Bull and bullock are exempted. There is a legal ban for 60 years. Nothing to do with our government. Okay. That's all. Do you know, by the way, do you know which country in the world is the biggest exporter of beef? Probably India. Okay. Just checking. Let's go to the back. We've been waiting. Let's see who, who wants, who's been waiting longest at the back. Oh, the guy waving. Come on. Yes. There you go. Can I ask what makes the BJP, the VHP, the Bajrang Dal custodians of Hinduism? No, nothing. Who gave just, them just, that right? Just as, just as. Each organization has a view. It depends on how many people subscribe to that view. RSS, BH, BHP, BJP have a larger number of Indians supporting their view. Okay, uh, gentlemen here in the second row. Why is criticism of the BJP government or the PM equate to treating that person as unpatriotic or anti-Indian? Why is that culture being created? Oh, not at all. <laughs> You are, you are, you are, you are uh, grossly mistaken. You watch Indian channels. No, he watched. <laughs> you watch no, no, Indian no, 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 All on. the time. Rob, he watched all you. The, all, he all watched the... you in the very first answer say no, no, anyone who I, gives I, back their award is defaming the country uh, defaming because they feel the, yeah, that, that is yeah, pretty. Uh, you're uh, basically saying that unpatriotic. No, no, unpatriotic. Award, award, Vapsi by those 36 people. 36 people in India. Those who criticize BJP are in millions. Are in millions. They are all patriotic Indians. We do not question their patriotism. You have every right to question BJP, not India. You okay. cannot question India. Okay. That's the only point. Okay, lady in the glasses, there are four rows in the back. I'm a proud Indian. I also happen to be a minority. I believe that all religions are capable of fundamentalism. And since you have very vociferously believed today that and stated very clearly that there has been no evidence of any fundamentalism in India. Hypothetically, could you show us what an example of Hindu fundamentalism would look like so that people like us can actually watch out for it and ensure that our... So that... So that people... So that people like us can watch out for it and ensure that there is no sort of Hindu fundamentalism that Ra ever comes out. R rather than trying to show you what Hindu fundamentalism is like, I would rather try and ensure that there is no such Hindu fundamentalism in India and there is no such other fundamentalism so in India. Gonna, that is gonna, my answer to you. I mean, you're not going to, but surely you would concede, like anyone would concede, that there are groups who are pushing hatred, who are engaging in violence in the name of whatever you want to call it, Hindu political punish ideology, them. I said it Hindu many nationalism. Times punish them. No, but you accept it's happening. You accept uh, it, you, it, it, it sometimes it, seems like you're saying it, it's all it a myth, it's all a media society. creation. See, there is They're a, all burglars. There, there is a subtle difference. If somebody is, uh, you know, for example, somebody is justifying his violence uh, by quoting scriptures, call him a Hindu fundamentalist. Okay. But if he does it, we condemn it. Nobody has right to violence, nobody has right to fundamentalism. Okay, but you didn't answer a question to be Let's take this lady's question here. Yes, she'll be waiting a while. Uh, amongst the other, you know, factual incorrectness that we've seen here today, uh, there is no state of Kashmir, there is a state of Jammu and Kashmir. I am from that state. Uh, that <laughs> and, uh, uh, and another thing is that I'm a minority. I'm a Hindu and I'm a minority in the state, so I've seen enough evidence of uh, the other kind of fundamentalism. Indeed. My question to you, Ram Mataji, is this, that uh, in the Jammu province, which is one of the provinces of Jammu and Kashmir, we are seeing a lot of shelling from across the border. And my people from the Katwa, the Samba sector, which are not in Kashmir, by the okay. way, are in Jammu. What are you going to do? You have to take a tougher stand. What are you going to do to okay. protect them? No, no, we, we, we are taking we are guarding our borders with much more toughness than the previous governments. But then people pounce on us. You are, you know, you have to anyway buy peace with Pakistan. So you should tolerate all this. So we are counseling. saying we will protect the border. Come on. <laughs> Gentlemen here in the second row. Um, you talk about Indian um, Hindu culturalism, right? Um, I'm an Indian Muslim. And you probably agree that Islam came to India in the sixth century, not with Mughals and Christianity came in first or second century. So my ancestors, where I come from, have been Indian Muslims for 1,400 years. So where do I fit in? Why do you have to embrace? I'm proud of you. 
Thank you. But why, why do you have to... Proud of billions of Why do I have to embrace Indian Hinduism as my... I love Hinduism, but why do I have to be Hindutva? Why do you have to accept Indian Hinduism as my culture? To. You what? don't have to. So why do you propagate? That is the beauty of India. Well, well, you are the leader. You, you represent people. If it's a fringe element, that's fine. But you are a leader. Why do you propagate it? No, no. We, we propagate it in a very positive sense. You don't agree today. You don't agree. You don't agree by many agree. Okay, let's take this gentleman there who's jumping up. Sorry. <laughs> Basically, I'm from Afghanistan, and um, I understand that we hold a very strong uh, historical relationship with India. Okay. However, the stronger our relationship has gone to, gotten up with India, the more we suffer from our neighbor countries, which has the disputes with you. In the media, you say that you'll make, the, you know, you make up with them, you'll sit down with them, but in reality, you, you step back, both sides. In the, in the middle, okay. we are the ones who suffer. Okay. What is your uh, views um, to overcome this, situ now, this situation? Afghanistan and India have very ancient and strong relations. Those relations are good for our both countries. Okay, I'm going to take this gentleman here. Let's go. I just want to say, um, I'm not from Pakistan-occupied Kashmir. I am from Azad Kashmir, and I'm free. <laughs> Do you want to respond to that? <laughs> Mr. My no, no, question. No, no, wait, Mr. Ramadav, um, your biggest challenge is Kashmir. The PDP BJP coalition is a total failure. Okay. Human rights violation I'm on the cut rise. You off now. My question to you is when do you think will Indian occupied Kashmir be free? No, first of all, we will free Park occupied Kashmir. Okay. We first free the Park occupied Kashmir, then we think of other things. Okay. Um, before we finish, many years ago, I had the opportunity to visit the RSS headquarters in Nagpur in India. And when I went there, I saw this massive map on the wall which showed India, but no Pakistan and no Bangladesh. And I believe that's what's called Akand Bharat, uh, undivided India in some circles, Hindu national circles. Is that what you want to see one day? India restored, undivided, Bangladesh, Pakistan gone from the map. The RSS still believes that one day these parts which have, for historical reasons, separated only 60 years ago will again through popular goodwill, come together and Akhand Bharat will be created. Wow. The, RSS, believe that? the RSS believes in that. As an RSS, RSS, you the RSS, as, as an RSS member, I also hold, to, hold on to that view. But that does not mean we wage war on any country, we annex any country. It doesn't mean. You're going One, to persuade if, them if, through if two, arguments. If two Germanys can come together, if two Vietnams can come together, what, do you, what makes you to but think you that two that. Pakistan and India cannot come together? Okay. So, just to clarify, when I, when, I asked you, when I asked you about what was your proposal for Kashmir, we now heard it. It's basically India takes over everything. No, no, no. Kashmir is a different issue. What Pakistan has Sindh, Pakistan Agreed. has Baluchistan. And which all of do not coming want, back to India. Which, and part, all which do not want to remain in Pakistan. So much human rights violation okay. in Baluchistan. So much human rights Should violation. They, they are also fighting but you for their own rights. But you we are not India. doing anything. You we just are told saying, me 30 seconds we are ago, saying, I want to see it all part of India. You just said that. The RSS believes in no, that. The RSS but you're without the violence, the RSS. without war, through popular consent, it can happen. It happened in the world. Okay. It happened in Jammu and Kashmir. Okay. Kashmir Thank you very much for your time. Anyone. You've been a very strong guest, I think it's fair to say. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for your time and coming you. here <laughs> and taking part of the show. Thank you. Thanks also to our excellent panel of experts and to our audience members here in the Oxford Union. Thanks for watching at home. That's the end of this current series of Head to Head, but keep watching Al Jazeera. Thank you very much.